Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service here at Dale St. Andrew's Parish Church. Whether you're here with us in the sanctuary or joining us online, we hope you feel welcome and part of our worship today. Um, if you are joining us online, whether live or on catch-up, you're in for a treat because we have now managed to complete the upgrade of our tech system, and we are now streaming and recording in high definition. So, if the, uh, if the start times of the service get later and later, you'll know it's because Derek and I are spending longer and longer in makeup trying to make sure that these <laughs> blemishes and things are not, uh, are not picked up on the high definition cameras. Um, so we're grateful for that anyway. Uh, our thanks as well to Pauline and, and Helen for being with us again today and providing uh, our service uh, to the deaf, um, especially to Helen for uh, coming and slumming it with us today after being at uh, Edinburgh yesterday signing for Her Majesty the Queen, which she's delighted about. And we are... We, we share in her delight for that and also in the delight that she does feel that she can come back here to Motherwell afterwards. Although she is, of course, signing today for the King of Kings, which is not me, by the way, but is, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ. The notices have been on the screens as you've been coming in. Because it's summer, we no longer have a printed news sheet. Um, so as you're coming Sunday by Sunday, please do take the time to look at the screens and see what's going on in our church family. There's a couple of things to draw your attention to today. The first is that after the service, our annual American brunch will be taking place in the large hall. Uh, a number of pancakes and things are being prepared for us, so please do stay behind after the service if you can um, and come through and enjoy uh, the American brunch. I know that it's three pounds for adults. I can't remember how much it is for children. 150 for children. So please do come through, um, give a wee donation and take part in our American brunch. We're also this year going to be running a, a short summer holiday <coughs> club um, from the 11th of July to the 13th of July. So just uh, in just over a week's time. Uh, this has come about because uh, one of our young adults felt that it was a shame that children can go through the summer and miss out on such things as school meals. So part of this holiday club is, is to offer a time of fun, a time of sharing of the Christian faith, but also to make sure that kids are coming and being given a, a good meal <coughs> uh, for these days. So we are looking for donations of food for that if anyone is able to contribute. We're looking for things like crisps or fruit, uh, juice, sausage rolls, beans, that sort of thing. But if you're in any doubt as to what uh, we're needing, you can speak to Debbie Bogle, Fiona Porter, Alec Baird, or any of the young adults who will be part of that holiday club. So please, if you feel you would like to contribute something, come and speak to us and we can give you an idea of what we're looking for. We come to God today from a variety of places, both in terms of where we live, but also in terms of what is going on in our lives. No matter where we find ourselves today, God calls us to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand, that he may lift us up in due time. And he encourages us to cast all our anxieties on him because he cares for us. So come to God, cast your anxieties on him because he loves you and he will lift you up in due time. We come to God today to give praise and glory to his name by standing and singing our first hymn in our service, hymn number 111, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And we'll stand and sing this together. <laughs>
Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray together. Almighty God, loving Heavenly Father, we gather in your name to worship you this day. We are here because of our love for you and because you call us to demonstrate the love that we have through our worship of you. We pray that our love and devotion to you would shine this day and that all who gather would know that you, our Lord and our God, are our first love, the one whom we place above all others. Merciful God, as we gather, we acknowledge that although you are meant to be our first love, we still sin against you in the way that we live and the way that we act. We have failed you. We have let you down. We have treated one another badly. We have not lived up to the standard to which you call us. But there is a way we can escape the consequences of our poor actions and choices. Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, you have taken away the consequences of our sin. So through faith, we are made righteous in your sight. Help us cling to our faith this day. And to know that because of our faith, we are a forgiven people. Not content just to forgive us through Christ, you continue to speak to us, Lord God. We hear your voice through the word of Scripture. We perceive your leading through the promptings of your Holy Spirit. We experience your equipping as we gather and worship you. Thank you, wonderful God, that you are so involved in each of our lives. Be with us and lead us this day, we pray. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue to sing to God's glory by standing and singing hymn number 485. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in a rightful mind. In purer lives thy service find. In deeper reverence praise. Let us sing to God's glory together.
Good morning, everyone. I'm grateful to Stuart for leading um, the early part of our service today and also <clears throat> the latter part of the service because I'm still struggling a bit with my voice, but um, not wanting to be totally isolated. I offered to do this, as I described it to Stuart, this we center section in the service. He said, I've never heard the reading and the sermon described as the we center section. Maybe that's what happens when you've done this for quite a while. Anyway, we're going to turn to God's Word now together. Um, we're going to read from Psalm 69. This is the, the third in a series of four visits to the Psalms when we're thinking about particularly what are called the Messianic Psalms, the Psalms that look forward to the life and the ministry, the death and the resurrection of Jesus as the one who was sent by God to be the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And I have to say that Psalm 69 is not probably on your top 10 list of Psalms, I guess. If I was to ask you for that, you would maybe go through reciting things like Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Psalm 46, which we're going to sing part of uh, today, God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Maybe Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Or perhaps even Psalm 150, the one that closes the book, where we're called upon to praise the Lord with a whole range of instruments and with loud <coughs> cries of hallelujah, praise the Lord. So Psalm 69 maybe doesn't rank very high, but I think that God has something to say to us from Psalm 69 today that's very pertinent to what's happening, particularly in our own country just now, but also across the world. So let's hear these words. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters the floods engulfed me. I am worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies without cause, those who seek to destroy me. I am forced to restore what I did not steal. You know my folly, O God, my guilt is not hidden from you. May those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me. O Lord, the Lord Almighty, may those who seek you not be put to shame because of me. O God of Israel. For I endure scorn for your sake, and shame covers my face. I am a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. When I weep and fast, I must endure scorn. When I put on sackcloth, people make sport of me. Those who sit at the gate mock me, and I am the song of the drunkards. But I pray to you, O Lord, in the time of your favor, in your great love, O God, Answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me, from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or the depths swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your great mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Redeem me because of my foes. You know how I am scorned, disgraced, and shamed. All my enemies are before you. Scorn has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. 
May the table set before them become a snare. May it become retribution and a trap. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see and their backs be bent forever. Pour out your wrath on them. Let your fierce anger overtake them. May their place be deserted. Let there be no one to dwell in their tents. For they persecute those you wound and talk about the pain of those you hurt. Charge them with crime upon crime. Do not let them share in your salvation. May they be blotted out of the book of life and not be listed with the righteous. I am in pain and distress. May your salvation, O God, protect me. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hooves. The poor will see and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts live. The Lord hears the needy and does not despise his captive people. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and all that move in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. Then people will settle there and possess it. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell there. Amen. And we give thanks to God for this reading from his word. We'll return to these verses in just a few moments, but before we do, let's sing the words of another psalm. As the deer pants for the waters, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire. I long to worship you. It's number 550 in the church hymnary. <coughs> From time to time, the Home Office in the UK government issues what are called threat levels. Um, that slide on the screen shows you the kind of gradation of how they work these things out. It's based usually on intelligence from MI5 and other agencies as to what's going on both in our own country and around the world. At present, we are at the second highest 
in these levels, which you'll see um, reads severe, which means that an, atta an attack from international terrorists is what they say, uh, quote unquote, highly likely. But before people kind of panic on the basis of that, you need to know that we've been at that level since around August of 2014. So for almost two years, we've been at the second highest threat level. And actually, there was only a short period um, before that where it changed. And for another couple of years before that, we had been at that high level also. We're not at the highest level, which is indicated as being critical and in which they say an attack might be imminent. But I wonder if there were a similar scale for personal anxiety and for worry, where would you place yourself just now in terms of what's going on in our country and around the world? Because in the past seven to ten days, it seems as if much of the fabric of our society has been deeply challenged. A huge amount of change. There is uncertainty following the referendum on the European Union. That's for sure. It doesn't matter where you go, whether you're at the shops or just walking along the street. You can overhear conversations between people expressing one side or the other of the debate, but both sides of the debate expressing a sense of anxiety. The financial markets have been shifting, it would seem almost daily. Businesses are certainly reflecting on what the outcome of this seismic vote means for them. Young people are concerned about the future of their families. Many older folk wonder how it's all going to work out in respect to their pensions, in terms of their livelihoods. And the polarization which has taken place in much of what has been written about this between young people and older people, I personally think has been very unhelpful. And some of the accusations and allegations that have been thrown amongst the different groups equally have not been particularly helpful. I don't know what it must be like to be a teacher of modern studies in our high schools. I guess that they're going to have to rewrite all of their class notes over the summer period. And certainly what we've seen is the truth of the statement that has been made for quite a long time now, that a week is very definitely a long time in politics. Things have changed, things are changing. Where does that leave us? Enter Psalm 69. David, in the psalm that we read this morning, is in deep distress. He's in very real trouble. He's struggling, he says, to survive. He's feeling quite overwhelmed. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I've come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I'm worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. It's not entirely clear and we can't be sure what it was that David faced at this time in his life that he wrote this great psalm. What was it that was troubling him? What were the circumstances? We don't know. We can't be sure. And in a sense, it really doesn't matter anyway, because what we've got contained in the verses that follow are some helpful hints and some fundamental principles as to how a person of faith in God might face challenging 
And because we face challenging times just now, it seems very appropriate that we're reading this psalm together this morning. The good advice starts with those opening verses that I just quoted to you. Because you see, the first thing that David does in verses 1 to 3 is he gives a very honest assessment. He doesn't try to hide from the obstacles that he faces. He cries out to God. He doesn't pretend that everything is going to be okay. Don't worry. Be happy. That kind of attitude. No. He looks to God. He takes his complaint to God. And that complaint includes a reference to the sense that David feels that somehow God is absent from his circumstances. I'm worn out calling for help, he says. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. There's almost reading between the lines there a sense of God, don't you really care about what's going on in my life just now? Don't you really care about the world and the way that it's going, the mess that it's in? But let me say this, just because David feels that God is somehow absent from his circumstances at that time doesn't mean that that's true. Maybe you, like me at times in your life, maybe even this is one of those times, feel that God doesn't care about you, that God is disinterested, that He's distant. That doesn't make that assertion true. And in fact, if you go on in the verses, you will see clearly that David himself recognizes that even although he feels God is absent, that it's not God's fault. In verses 5 and 6, he says this, You know my folly, O God. My guilt is not hidden from you. May those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me, O Lord, the Lord Almighty. May those who seek you not be put to shame because of me. David is saying in these verses that the fact that he doesn't feel that God is close to him is not because God has walked away from him. Quite the opposite. David recognizes that it's he who has fallen away from God, from truly trusting, from truly putting his faith in the Lord. So it's not God who's letting David down, but the other way around. David is letting God down. God still stands with open arms, calling, waiting for David to put his trust in him. He does the same with you and me. But sometimes it's we through our anxieties and our fears who allow that faith to be sidelined. There's a story I used recently um, in one of my thoughts for the week in the Motherwell Times. You may or you may not have read it. This is certainly not an advert for the Motherwell Times. It was a story of the, the time uh, of wartime and of the Blitz in London. And a father and his son had managed to escape as the shells fell all around them. And in the garden of the home where they lived was a great big crater which had been formed as a result of one of the shells that had fallen and exploded. And the father jumped down into the crater to safety, but his son wasn't aware of where his father had gone. He could hear his father's voice, but as he looked around, all he could see were the shells falling and also the darkness 
of the crater. He knew that his father's voice came from the darkness. And the father was calling to him to just jump and to trust him that he would catch him. Eventually, the son was able to trust enough and put enough faith, even though he couldn't see his father, to believe that he was there. And so he jumped into the darkness, into the unknown, and his father caught him. And for me, that's a really good uh, image, if you like, of what's going on here in Psalm 69. And it's something of an image, perhaps, of what's going on in our country and across Europe and our world just now. We're surrounded by a great deal of darkness. We feel sometimes that God is absent and that He doesn't care. But that doesn't make it true. God is not absent. He is a heavenly Father. He does care. What we need to do is, like David, to exercise our faith, to take our faith in both hands and to jump to jump into God's safekeeping. In verse 13, it says something about this. I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favor. In your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me, from the deep waters do not let the floodwaters engulf me or the depths swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love and your great mercy turn to me. So David starts in this psalm by making an honest assessment of what's going on in his life, of the trouble that he faces. He goes on to recognize his own waywardness that he is the one who has stepped away from God rather than the other way around. And then David starts to present his requests, his needs to God in prayer. And how does he pray that? Well, virtually every phrase in these verses I've just read to you from verse 13 and following puts its focus not on his circumstances, but on God. I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favor, in your great love, with your salvation, your sure salvation, out of the goodness of your love, in your great mercy, turn to me. If you don't know what to pray when you're facing a difficult situation, you could do worse than actually take the words that I've just read to you from Psalm 69 and make them your prayer. There's nothing more powerful than praying Scripture back to God. And the other thing about this I notice is you don't need to wait until you're perfect before you cry out to God. David recognizes his shortcomings his waywardness, his problems, his failures. And in the same way, God is not waiting for us to be perfect before we bring our situations to Him in our prayers. When we're honest with Him about our anxieties, our worries, our concerns, then actually we're in a good place to pray because these are the ways in which God can meet our needs and give us precisely what we need. So let me pause for a moment and say, if you were writing this psalm, if you were writing Psalm 69, what would you put in there? What is it that presently troubles you? What is it that's holding you down? Is it a concern for your health or maybe the health of someone else that you care about? Is it concern for your employment or your financial situation, particularly in light of the wider circumstances following the EU referendum? 
What about the way in which our world is changing? The global shifts that are taking place, both politically and ideologically, is that the burden that you're bearing? Are you perturbed about the ways in which you hear people speak to one another? I know I have been. The last couple of weeks I've been utterly shocked, both in the street and also particularly on social media, just to see the things that people have written and have said, which are so cruel. And I truly believe this is a time when Christian people, followers of Jesus Christ, need to be peacemakers. We need to try to work together with those who have a different view to ourselves. What about the fears of acts of violence based on ethnicity, which are happening in our society right now? It may be one of these things. It may be something I've not mentioned at all. What are your fears? What are your anxieties? What are your concerns? What are your burdens? And more importantly, where do you go with them? Where do you take them? How can you express them? Psalm 69 seems to be suggesting to us that there's a very good place for us to take all of those concerns and anxieties. And that's to God. This past week, I attended a couple of funerals, uh, one of which was for a former teacher of mine at Garian Academy, Donald Plant, who was an inspirational man and influenced the lives of countless thousands of young people during their time at the high school I attended. And one of the songs that we sang came to mind as I was preparing Psalm 69. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Psalm 69 and David's situation of facing extreme hardship and difficulty, anxiety, these real burdens of life, whatever it was that was causing that feeling, those feelings in him, it was very real. What did he do about it? He took it to God. It's not, it's very straightforward to sing, it's not maybe quite so straightforward to do at times, but the opportunity is there for us to come to God. This Psalm 69, as I said in introducing it, is another of what we call our messianic psalms. In other words, it has a touching point with the life of Jesus, um, the ways in which He showed us we ought to live, and even the way that He died, the way that He gave His life for us. There are a couple of touching points in Psalm 69. Let me just draw them to your attention before we close. In verses 8 and 9, David says, I am a foreigner to my own family, a stranger to my own mother's children. Zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. There's a familiar ring to those words. After clearing the tables of the money changers in the temple, Jesus' disciples said something similar of him, that zeal for the Lord's house consumed him. So perhaps that was a fulfillment of these verses written such a long time before. But the most recognizable verse, I think, in Psalm 69 that chimes with the death of Jesus on the cross is verse 21, where it says, they put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. Do you remember? John chapter 19 verse 28 describes how when Jesus hung on the cross and He said, I am thirsty, what did they do? 
they offered him a sponge which was soaked in vinegar and gall. So there are links between the New Testament and the Old Testament here in this reading. There are links between what David faced and the circumstances that surrounded him, what Jesus faced as he died on the cross for your sin and mine, and what you and I face in terms of challenging times. But before we finish, I want to draw your attention to the fact that the remaining verses from 30 through to 36 offer us a change of pace. David starts with lament, with great sadness at what's going on in his life, but he finishes with praise. I will praise God's name in song and glorify Him with thanksgiving. The poor will see and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts live. For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise His captive people. Let heaven and earth praise Him, the seas and all that move in them. We can move from lament to praise. We can move from being a victim to being a victor. When we take that step into what might seem like the darkness, when we listen to our Father's voice calling to us, and when we allow Him to embrace us and bear us up and through those difficult circumstances, whether that be post-EU referendum or whether that be other things that are happening in your lives and in mine just now, there is one thing for sure, Psalm 69 declares, that we can trust in God and He will not let us down. Let us pray. Lord, there are many things in this world that are changing, but you are not one of them. Right here and now, I put fresh faith in your promises to bring all your people to a safe harbor, a place of peace. And so help me, Lord, trusting in your reliability to be calm in the midst of turmoil and to lead others to you gently believing that in Christ all will be well. Amen. And now we're going to sing some of those great words of encouragement to our hearts. God is our strength and refuge, our present help in trouble, and we therefore will not fear, though the earth should change. God, the Lord of hosts, is with us evermore.
we continue in our worship of God this morning as our offerings are both given and received. Let us come to God now to give thanks for the offering which has been received, but also to share in some prayers for our world. Let us pray together. Lord God, we give thanks for the offering which has been received today. We ask that you would bless it and help us to use it to further the spread of your gospel in this place and beyond. Give us wisdom and integrity as we reflect on how best to use the money we have received. God of peace, we pray for the healing of the nations and for a just and equal sharing of all the good things this earth affords us. Renew our commitment to overcome ancient hatreds. Help us pull down the walls that separate us and to overcome the attitudes that divide us. Bring near the day, we pray, when your people of whatever nationality may come and go in peace. We pray especially for those who have been affected in the recent bombings in Turkey, in Bangladesh, and just this morning in Iraq. We are deeply grieved that people think they have a right to take the lives of others. We are deeply grieved at the loss of life as the lives of people are cut short. Help bring healing to those who are suffering and bring justice to those who perpetrate such acts of evil. 
God of wisdom at a time of political uncertainty within the United Kingdom, having voted to leave the European Union, we pray for politicians, for diplomats, and for civil servants here and in the European Union. Bless them with calm hearts and clear minds. And give them a commitment to doing what is right and just, as well as giving them a willingness to seek what is good for all the people of Europe and the world. We pray as well concerning those who are using this decision to further their own agenda, an agenda which often belittles and abuses fellow human beings. May they, along with us all, be reminded that every person who walks this earth, no matter their view, is made in the image of God and therefore should be treated with the dignity and respect that this affords. God of peace, we thank you for those who feel called to protect us and our freedoms by serving in the armed forces. We remembered the 100th anniversary of the Battle of the Somme this week, a brutal and bloody part of the First World War. We pray for those who may remember a parent or grandparent who served in this war. And we pray for those who serve in our armed forces today. Be with and protect each one of them, we pray, our Lord and our God. God of the least and the lost, we pray in Christ's name for people burdened by life's cares and concerns, for people who are homeless or living on the edge of hardship and poverty, for people whose lives are overshadowed by illness, loneliness, or loss. Surround all for whom we pray with your gifts of healing, hope, and peace. And help us bring the light of Christ's care into the darkness of human despair. Help each one of us, we pray, to be a light to the world and a healing to the nations. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In light of all that we've been reflecting on today and all that we've been praying for, our final hymn is very fitting as it reminds us that we go into this world to serve God, not in our own strength, but in the strength that the Lord provides for us. So let us stand and conclude our service today by singing hymn number 862 from Mission Praise, I'll Go in the Strength of the Lord.
as you leave from this place today. May you go, may you go, may you go in the strength of the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon and dwell within your heart this day and be with you now and always. Thank you.